Hey everyone, this is James with WSTrades.com. I want to provide an update here on ticker RIVN or Rivian Automotive. So they are down 0.58% on the day. Um, I actually made a trade right before earnings. Um, I was looking at the consensus. So analysts were expecting them to come in at a loss of $1.42 per share. And uh, they came in with a beat on EPS, actually losing only $1.08 per share. But just seeing that estimate and then kind of looking at previous earnings, I was like, oh, these guys just bleed money, you know. They don't make money from operations and, you know, their EPS is pretty much always negative. So I was just like, I'm going to sell a call. Um, even if they beat on earnings, um, I don't think the 28 call is going to get tested. And that's exactly what happened. They had an earnings beat, but the thing had a fat sell off anyways. Um, so that was a nice trade. I went max profit on that 28 call and they have continued to bleed here. Um, so I was looking through some of their financials and they are pretty ugly. Um, the only thing that looked kind of okay to me was the uh, assets versus liabilities. So just looking at the quarterly here, um, it's up and down. I mean, it's not, assets are not consistently growing quarter after quarter, but it's kind of up and down. You see they went from 20.1 billion down to 19 billion down to 17.8 billion in assets, but then they climbed up for one quarter to 18.1, and then they went back down to 17.2, um, and the liabilities um, have been growing quarter after quarter. So you can see we went from 3.3 billion in liabilities up to 5.5 billion. So as the assets are kind of shaky and up and down, uh, you know, the liabilities are growing quarter after quarter. Um, if you look at the annual numbers, um, it's kind of up and down as far as uh, the liabilities go. You know, we went from three billion in liabilities up to six, down to 2.7, back up to four billion. Um, and then the uh, assets made a huge jump here between 2020 and 2021. You can see we went from 4.6 billion total assets to 22.2, but then drew down significantly going to the end of 2022. Um, the income statement, uh, we're seeing Gross profits uh, in the negative in the year over year. You can see the end of 2021, they lost uh, 465 million, or you know that was their gross profit, negative 465 million. Then it jumped hugely to negative 3.1 billion. Uh, let's go into the quarterly to get a little more recent data. Uh, gross profit is kind of trending in the right direction the last couple quarters, but you can see it climbed from negative 704 million up to negative 917 up to negative 1 billion at the end of 2022 um, so it was kind of going in the wrong direction there but then has started to improve but you can see they are not profitable even based on their most recent quarter they lost 412 million um, and then let's look at the cash flow statement here from operations uh, year over year, it's really bad. You can see they went from, at the end of 2019, negative 353 million up to negative 5 billion um, at the end of 2022. So if we look at the quarterly, um, it's just kind of up and down. You see 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. So they're actually going in the wrong direction and then they finally made a move here in the right direction and had a slight decrease here in the operating cash flow. But still, you can see they're not making any money quarter after quarter from operations. Um, and we saw in the income statement, they're not making any profit quarter after quarter. Um, but looking at that balance sheet, we do see a big surplus here, you know, a big difference, um, you know, between liabilities and assets. So uh, for me, just kind of looking at the financials, the year over year, the quarterly, um, they're still just hemorrhaging money. They're not making profit. They're not making cash flow from operations but it looks like they can maintain this for a little while based on their assets versus their liabilities. I was actually digging into um, what's going on with those uh, cash and cash equivalents that we see in the balance sheet there. Um, and it looks like comparing to December of 2022 to this most recent quarter, they had 2.6 billion in cash and they uh, spent 1.4 billion of that so we see a pretty good reduction there in the amount of cash but they stay pretty steady with their money market funds uh, they had 7.1 billion in money market funds um, at the end of december of last year and they're still pretty much at the same level 
but you can see a decrease here, cash and cash equivalents. Uh, the quarter ending December 31st of 2022, they were 11.5 billion. I saw a pretty good decrease down to 9.2 billion. Um, so for me, I kind of see this as a good opportunity to sell calls like I did before earnings. Um, they did also release a shareholder letter, which has some positive stuff in it. They talk about a 50% increase in production versus Q1 of 23. They talk about a 35,000 gross profit per vehicle um, you know, versus quarter one of 2023. And they talk about the guidance for EBITDA improving, but it's still a negative 4.2 billion. Um, so even though they have some positives here, some things are moving in the right direction. This company is still hemorrhaging money like crazy. We saw from December 2022 to June of this year, they burned through $1.4 billion in cash. Um, so for me, I see this as a good call selling opportunity here, just like I did before earnings, um, until we can see you know these numbers turn around on the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow statements. I would like to see things consistently head in the right direction. Some of them are kind of shaky and they're just up and down. Um, and I was looking at their book value per share too, based on the most recent quarter. I think it was like around $12. So right now they're trading at a premium. If you look at the fundamental value based on book value per share. Um, so for me, definitely not something I'm gonna be going long. Uh, I think selling out of the money calls on this is a good strategy. Um, you can see on their EPS here that they are kind of trekking in the right direction though. They went from losing $1.88 a share down to this beat of losing $1.08 per share. I would like to see that continue. I would like to see that EPS, that negative number, continue to shrink and for them to work towards a break even on EPS. Um, but we'll kind of see what happens here with their next quarter. I know they also recently in March did a $1.3 billion offering and I believe those are green convertible notes. So that's gonna come in the form of dilution there. Um, so we'll kind of see if they continue to burn through cash and if they have to do more offerings like this, that's definitely gonna dilute. Um, you know, the current share shareholders that are long and have been holding this company long, but I'll continue to keep you updated on ticker RIVN or Rivian Automotive. Please like this video. Please also subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed hit that notification bell. Appreciate you for taking the time to watch this. Talk to you soon.